This episode of the Demonic Compendium contains spoilers for the following games. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to a knowledgeable new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. Now, normally April is when I try to cover things related to edutainment, so I figured it'd be fun to try that out on this show as well. And today's demon was the first one I thought of when I thought about learning. So, dust off those textbooks and turn to Chapter 5, because today, we're talking about Thoth. Thoth, sometimes also referred to as Jehudi, is the god of wisdom, magic, the moon, and writing in Egyptian mythology. He is often depicted as a humanoid ibis, or sometimes as a baboon, the latter being far more common in Megami Tensei. Thoth is said to be the inventor of the written word, and is known for having transcribed several texts, stories, and documents himself, which make up what many historians claim to be the Book of Thoth. He is the one who gave us the 365-day calendar, and used his status as a moon god to ensure that time could still be kept without the sun in the sky. One of Thoth's primary responsibilities in Egyptian culture is during the judgment of the deceased. Many people already know the story of Anubis weighing the heart of the recently passed against the Feather of Truth to determine their fate, and it was Thoth's job to carefully monitor each ritual and write down the verdict, essentially being the stenographer of each trial so they'd have written records for everybody. Thoth also played a major role in the myth of Osiris' resurrection. After all the pieces of the god were gathered by Isis, Thoth gave her the incantation to revive him. Thoth would later have a daughter named Sashat, who was also seen as a goddess of wisdom and writing, but this cheetah-clad child was often more associated with mathematics, astronomy, accounting, and other number-based writings than the traditional written word of her father, who was also sometimes her lover because mythology. Thoth's compendium entry from Devil Summoner 2, Raido Kuzanoha vs. King Abaddon, refers to him as an almighty god of Egyptian mythology with the head of a baboon. He stands opposite Set, the god of evil, and sides with Osiris and Isis, the gods of good. And consider this a two-for-one sale, because while we're talking about Thoth, I'd also like to bring up a certain persona. It's no secret that the ancient Greeks and Romans gained familiarity with Egyptian culture, and in certain cases they were able to make connections between their mythologies. As a god of wisdom and inventor of the written word, Thoth was often associated with the Greek god Hermes, and combined, they came to be known as a more singular entity, Trismegistus, or Thrice Great. In fact, some of the primary worship of Thoth was in the Egyptian city, Hermopolis, or City of Hermes. So there was so much cross-culture between these two deities, it's no surprise they came to be worshipped as one. Trismegistus was often seen as a scribe, scholar, and a primary figure in the field of alchemy. Design-wise, Thoth's Megami Tensei design is generally pretty faithful to his artistic depictions. Whenever Thoth is described as a baboon, he sits stoically and often has the lunar disk upon his head, befitting his status as a moon god. And that is more or less exactly what we have with his demon form. In his earliest appearances, Thoth looked like his white fur had been run through the laundry with Joker's gloves, but the white baboon has been the most frequently seen. And as an added touch, he is of course holding what we have to assume is the Book of Thoth. What's kind of surprising to me is that Thoth seems to be shown as an ibis much more frequently than a baboon, but this isn't really reflected in any of his Megami Tensei appearances. I thought there would be a bird Thoth in Demi Kids or Last Bible or something, but... No, he's purely a baboon except for one possible appearance that I'll get to later. Though speaking of birds, while perhaps not an ibis, it's well worth mentioning the design of Trismegistus. As Thoth and Hermes were often worshipped as this singular deity, many aspects of Thoth went into this persona as well, primarily through symbols of alchemy. The most notable is of course the red stone he holds in his beak, being the Philosopher's Stone, which among other things was capable of turning lead into gold. Trismegistus also contains several other references to the Ripley Scroll, including a being specifically referred to as the Bird of Hermes. As far as game history goes, Thoth is a being that had a nice role in his very first appearance and has stayed pretty steady since then. In Shin Megami Tensei If, Thoth has a minor role on Akira's route as an optional boss, but if the player has recruited both Hathor and Sobek, he goes from an angry monkey to a tiny happy monkey and he'll join your team. Thoth also has a minor role in Shin Megami Tensei's Strange Journey as the demon who tasks the protagonist with the Wise Man's Library series of quests, and in Strange Journey Redux, is fought as a demon in Demon Eho's third boot camp mission. 
And speaking of Strange Journey, Thoth appears in Synchronicity Prologue as... Well, I hesitate to call him an enemy. I mean, sure, he'll hurt you if you touch him, but he's really just kind of minding his own business. And in what may be giving the game too much credit, I like that you use Thoth to solve puzzles in this game, making him an enemy you bypass with brains rather than brawn. In a fun connection to Thoth's role as a symbol of alchemy, in Devil Summoner 2, Raido Kuzunoha vs. King Abaddon, Thoth is needed to complete the case file, Wise Demon Required, where all you have to do is have a Thoth and hand it over. What's most interesting is that the client for this case is famed occultist Alistair Crowley, who published his own series of Thoth-related documents, and Raido's reward is the Philosopher's Stone itself, which is needed for another case file, Collection Warrant 3. Speaking of Crowley's connections to Thoth in Megaten, he is accredited as the one behind the Thoth tarot deck that is occasionally utilized in the Persona series, with the cards painted by his associate, Lady Frida Harris, who was supposedly instrumental in convincing him to put more focus on the supernatural in his contributions to tarot. Some of the main differences between the Thoth deck and the other more commonly used decks are simple changes, like the High Priestess and Wheel of Fortune simply becoming the Priestess and Fortune Arcana. The world becomes the universe, strength becomes lust, not hunger, and perhaps the most well-known change as far as the Persona series is concerned, Judgment becoming the Aeon Arcana. In fact, I believe the figure on the Aeon card in the Persona series is supposed to be Thoth himself, making these the only games to utilize his Ibis depiction to wrap up what I was saying earlier. Alongside several other Egyptian demons, Thoth appears in Persona 5 in Futaba's palace under the shadow name Chanting Baboon. Thoth is also the form taken by the shadow of Shoichi Oyamata in the Mementos mission Bad Medicine, a necessary part of completing Tai Takemi's confidant. And since I've talked about him in every other part of this episode, let's wrap things up by looking at our Thothish persona, Trismegistus. In Persona 3, Trismegistus is Junpei Yori's ultimate persona, which is fun because his initial persona is actually Hermes, so the evolution there makes perfect sense, as Trismegistus is a combination of multiple deities in mythology and in the game. However, in the games, the other part of Trismegistus is Chidori's persona, Medea, whom she transfers into Junpei at the cost of her own life. And naturally, Trismegistus has returned as Junpei's ultimate persona in every subsequent game the character has appeared in, such as the Persona Q titles and Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. And just to cover my own butt here, if Junpei ever winds up in Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, we can expect to see him there as well. And so there you have it, Thoth, the artistic aloof albino ape of astronomy, alchemy, and articulation. Who is sometimes also an ibis. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.